Hello everyone, welcome to TIC. This is Kushal and today we will be looking at the fourth question of the series buy and sell stock, which is the question best time to buy and sell stock for. So let's quickly see what the question has to say. Okay, uh, so we are given an integer array prices where the prices of I is the price of a given stock on day I. And we are also given an integer value K. So just like the previous questions, we are supposed to find the maximum profit. And uh, the difference between the third and the fourth problem is this given value K. In the third problem, we were supposed to do only two transactions and uh, in this problem, we can do at most K transactions. Suppose we have these given stock prices and the value of K is 2. Now, the first transaction should be very clear. If we buy the stock at 2 and sell it at 4, we can get the profit of 2, right? And this was our first transaction. Can we do any more transaction over here? No, right? So we, even if we do not complete all the key transactions, we might be able to get the maximum profit. What about this example? Uh, we can start buying the stock at three and probably sell at six. Or what we can do is, you know, buy the stock at two and sell it at six. This will give us more profit. So this can be our first transaction. And uh, we can probably buy the stock at zero and sell it at three, which will be our second transaction. So we can get the profit of four plus three. 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to see a recursive solution and build a recursion tree. Now, if we find any repeating sub problems, we can use memoization to store them. If you don't understand memoization, no worry, we'll cover that while coding. So before we start the recursion, let's quickly look at the variables we need to keep while recursing. Now, the first value will be the index. Index will point towards the current price. In the beginning, as the value is 0, we will start with the price 3. Now second will be the state. It could be buying or selling. As we have not bought anything uh, before, uh, we will just start with the buying state. And third will be the transactions. The transactions that we have done till now. In the beginning, it will be zero. So in the very beginning, we have two choices, whether to buy or not buy. So if we buy, we come at this stage. We are at index one. Now, as we have bought it, we need to sell. So the state will be sell and the transaction value is still 0. And here we are at first index, but as we have not bought anything, the state is still buy and the transaction value is still 0. All right, let's look at the second level. So as the state was sell here, we will have two options, whether to sell or do not sell. If we sell, the state changes from sell to buy and the transaction value gets to 1. If we do not do it, the state remains sell and the transaction value is 0. Accordingly, here as the state was buy, if we buy, the state gets to sell. If we do not, the state still remains buy. All right, so some of you might be able to notice that this node and this node, these are the same nodes. We are at index two, the state is sell, as we need to sell in both, and the transition count still remains zero. Now, even if we bought at different points for both of these nodes, the recursion tree further down will be same for both of the nodes. So what we can do is calculate for one of them, and whatever result that we get in the end, we can save that result and directly use the result for this value. Let's see how we do that in code. All right, let's quickly write the recursive solution that we just discussed. So it's going to be like public. Now, as we need to return the maximum profit, the return type needs to be integer. And we're going to call it a helper function. Helper. Uh, for the arguments, we're going to pass the array, prices array. And as per we discussed on the whiteboard, we need a few variables, right, for the recursion. The first variable is going to be like integer index, second, the state, right, integer state, third, total transactions, uh, transactions, I hope the spelling is right. And in the end, we can just pass the total number of transactions uh, specified, which is the value k. I know that the state needs to be buying and selling, and I have defined the state as integer. So what we're going to do for the simplicity is whenever I need to buy, I'll just pass zero. And whenever I need to sell, I'll pass one. Now the logic part. So here we need to write our base case for our recursion and here the real logic for the logic. If our state value is zero, which means we are in our buying stage. Else we are in our selling stage. Now, in each of the stages, we will have two options, whether to actually buy or not buy. 
similarly here cell or not cell all right so now we're gonna see what happens in each of these cases please pay attention with this uh, we're gonna start with our buying case so if we're actually gonna buy we'll say option one just as we saw the recursion calls on the whiteboard our recursion call is going to be like helper we're gonna pass prices index is going to be increased state so as we bought the stock now we need to sell it right so the state will be one now uh, the transaction is going to be the same because the transaction increases when we actually sell the stock so transaction and the value k now as we bought the stock and this is the integer value uh, at the time of buying stock we need to pay the money right so what we need to do is uh, decrease the prices of i here which means the profit whatever that we get but initially we need to pay three dollars right don't worry if you don't understand this right now you will get it in a moment uh, now let's see option two so if you are not buying the stock uh, the our helper call is going to be like prices index is going to get increased uh, where state is going to be the same right because we have not bought it zero the transition and k value also remains the same now these two option one and option two are different profits and as we need to return the maximum profit we'll return uh, the math dot max of option one and option two so this was for buying the stock now let's write the same for selling it so for selling integer option one our recursion call is going to be like helper prices index is going to get increased now as we have sold it our next state is going to be zero because we need to buy now transaction is going to increase right because we bought the trans bought the stock once and sold it so transaction plus one and k remains the same now as we are selling the uh, stock here we will get some actual benefit right profit so whatever profit that we have at here like suppose we bought it at three and selling it at six we need to consider prices of i and add it as we subtracted the three from here adding it will cancel it and will get us profit uh, so this was for selling now for not selling which is option two the recursion call is going to be like prices index is going to get increased the state remains the same which is the value one transaction and transaction and k value also remains the same and we need to return the maximum value of these option one and option two all right so that was our logic now let's think about the base conditions so if our index exceeds the length of the prices array or the transaction values if it exceeds the value k we need to make that recursion call invalid right so um, let's write if index if, if if that's greater than or equal to prices dot length or the transaction values if it's greater than or equal to value k in that case we'll just return zero now let's call this helper function in our original function so we need to pass the prices index will be zero in the beginning as we need to buy first the state will be zero similarly transaction also zero and in the end we'll just pass k this seems to be all right let's try to run the code now okay oh we need to write index here we do not have a variable called i similarly we might have to change this also okay let's run the code missing the return oh sorry i forgot return here we're gonna return an integer value okay we are getting the right answer let's try to run it okay just what i expected we are getting time limit exceed so as we discussed on the whiteboard we're not dealing with the repeated sub problems right let's try to see how many test cases that we passed so oh we almost passed all the test cases only a couple of them are remaining right uh, let's try to deal with that repeated sub problem thing and let's you know just get all the test cases passed 
all right so for storing the intermediate results storing the calculated results we're gonna use a dp matrix and um, our dp matrix is going to be a 3d matrix as we're dealing with three of the variables the index date and the transactions right so uh, let's just define integer 3d matrix dp let's make an instance of that new integer so for the index the range for the index is going to be prices dot length and we're gonna add it add one to that the state there can be two states right so let's just put two over here and for k let's just write k plus one all right so um, we have initialized the dp matrix now at the time of recursion call if the value whatever we're gonna check if it already exists in the integer matrix we're gonna check it if the db of index the state and the transaction value is not equal to null so we are using the integer value and not the primitive primitive integer because the null check gets easier with this integer value if it's not equal to null then we can just return that value all right uh, similarly so while you know calculating here we can just put this value into our dp matrix if we have not calculated yet similarly here also all right seems to be all right let's try to run this code okay perfect so we were able to pass all the test cases this time let's discuss the complexities as well both for the recursive and the dp approach uh, for the recursive approach as we had two choices at each point whether to buy or not buy or whether to sell or not sell the time complexity will be 2 raised to n uh, for the space uh, the space complexity will be the size of the recursive, recursive stack space and it will be at most n number of uh, recursive calls long right so the space complexity will be just n now uh, for the dp approach the time complexity uh, as we are calculating the result for each and every value on the in the dp matrix the time complexity will be the size of the dp matrix which will be n into k into 2 right and the space as we are storing everything in our dp matrix the space also will be n into k into 2 all right that's it for the buy and sell stock series uh, if you have any questions, please comment it, uh, comment it out in the comment section. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.